Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another show. My name is Tyler, and I'm with Matt, the founder of ORATS. ORATS is an options analytics platform built on top of over 15 years of historical options data. And our dashboard is integrated with Tradier, meaning you can research and discover trades on our platform and then seamlessly send them through to your Tradier brokerage account. Today on the show, we're going to be using our legacy backtester, a familiar product for many longtime users of ORATS. This is our most capable and advanced backtester with many entry and exit indicators that we will be showing you how to use today. Before we get started, Matt, do you want to share your screen and go over our positions? Sure. Thanks, Tyler. Yeah, um, the old backtester. Um, you know, we have a backtester on our dashboard that's a backtest finder that has millions of pre-run strategies, but uh, some people still like to develop their own indicators that they want to check against uh, various strategies. So we have, uh, we support both. Uh, but yeah, so you see my screen okay? Yep. So we had two trades on. Uh, we had XLU, uh, long put diagonal. That was profitable till about, if you look at the watch list, the market was up and then it just came down. They must have, there's some mid-east tensions that must have uh, flared. So uh, we were looking good. Um, so I could I could pull up the, the diagonal here. I could say this is a paper trade for the, Trader Hub, so those are the uh, the notes come with it, and then I could look at uh, trade history, um, and I could see that it was worth like thirty cents earlier this morning, and now it's uh, worth uh, negative twenty cents. So uh, we were we were at a, a profit, and now we're at, at a loss. So hopefully it'll come back. We still we still have some time in that position, and we've got a good. Uh, Win, winning record going so uh hopefully we can uh, uh we, so we had our profit and loss was set at three times 15 so it hit two times 15 but we didn't didn't get out there uh we had another mchi so i could look at our trade journal again i'm teasing it out we haven't released it but uh so uh let's see on april 8th one week ago um that was the xlu for 15 cents so we see that there and then uh, we, we we also see the profit and loss so we're down a little bit right now um and then the week before uh so here's the mchi um we uh our entry price uh was negative so we sold a, a call spread for for 58 cents and we bought it back for 25 cents so we had a 33 dollar profit on that so that worked out pretty well uh, and that's all the ones I had on, Tyler. Um, so should we should we jump into back testing? Yeah, let's uh, let's dive into it. So if you go to the back testing tab on the left, um, this is uh, where you can get started. So you have the all back tests is our pre can back test. That's the the default tab, and you can browse through uh, tens of millions uh, pre can back tests. A lot of them on Spy and IWM, and then we also have um, almost a hundred other uh, stocks that uh, stocks and ETFs that you can find a bunch of strategies for. We have uh, over ten strategies for each ticker, uh, which is really cool. And then the entry triggers. Yeah, so the entry triggers and the exit triggers. Those are something that we've added um, as sort of like enhancements to. Um, a regular back test. So you can see how that back test performed under different environments. So if the environment was uh, a low VIX, like if the VIX was below 15, and we tested that as an entry trigger um, uh, for each back test in the pre canned list. We've also tested simple moving averages, 14 day RSI, uh, implied volatility percentiles, and slope percentiles. And this is all updating too, because you know earlier this morning the RSI wasn't oversold. <laughs> now it's oversold, and the VIX uh, is now in a moderate. So you know these are updating during the day, which is which is very helpful. And we should also mention that the trade ideas conform to the 
uh, to the in environment, I call that. So here's a long call calendar. Uh, it's still adding them, but uh, and uh, so there aren't any. There aren't any. So here's fix is moderate. Uh, our size mart. So we're updating, you know, our uh, our spy stuff as the as the market updates. Yeah, so really that's how those trade ideas sort of tie into the pre can back tests. Right, exactly. And what I was trying to point out is that the environment updates too. So the the trade ideas conform to the to the environment uh, that we're in right now. So. Right, so we're, we're not going to get a trade idea that hasn't been back tested on the environment that we're not in right now. Right, exactly. Well said. So, and you can see that it, they're not in all the time. When it flatlines, they're out, and then uh, you know only when the VIX in this is is when they get in fifteen day strategy, and then their exit trigger is there as well. So, as you might imagine, you know in the pre run strategies, the uh, you know, we, we've run many, you know, there are 5 million here, but still you, uh, traders might have their own indicators that they're looking at or ways to trade in particular. Uh, this is a short put spread. So, and then, and then what we do is, is we uh, sort rank this by the best return on risk. So we I could also, if I turn this on, then it only finds trades that are in the current uh, environment. I'm going to turn spread to stock price off right now. I'm going to turn that off. And then, um, so this will pull up, uh, you know, the best short put spreads based on this, this best return on risk. And then you could read about why, how, how we sort things. Cause there, you, you could sort on sharp ratio, you could sort on Sortinos, but uh, these are the ones that I like to look at. So the best one that it's looking at right now is a 36 day to expiration. 30, you sell the 33 delta, buy the six delta. Um, and these, you know, what, like we saw before, now the RSI is, is oversold. Earlier it was just moderate. Uh, IV percentile is high. Uh, and then we get out at 50% uh, stock uh, stop loss. So what we might do is we might say, well, if we want some different uh, indicators, we could go to this legacy back tester. So we could click on the legacy back tester. Um, and then when it comes up, we'll go to the back test here and then we'll go to create new back tests and we could go to spy bull, you know, a short put spread here. Um, again, the days to expiration and the deltas are defaulted to a 30 day and a 3015. Um, so you could change those. And you could also edit additional parameters. And that's what we're going to talk about today because there's a, so many things you could do. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. You know, the date range. So we go back to 2007 to 24. And then, you know, there are, there are a number of different things. Expiration type, monthly, weekly. Is, is there a stock position associated with that long or short or none? Uh, return type, you could do notional or uh, you could do margin. Entry days, uh, like if you have a long-term strategy, you can break it up. So you could trade like every 15 days or every five days or every day for that particular, if you wanted to do it that way. There's a spread yield percent. So when we're selling this this uh, put spread, you know, we have to get a certain amount of option entry price divided by stock price. So it's a, it's a ratio that you would adhere to a minimum and maximum. There's absolute spread price, absolute deltas, spread price difference. That that means the stock uh, difference, excuse me, the uh, strike difference means, so if you're $10 wide, you have to sell it for at least 20% uh, of that or, or, or something. And then you could also get out at a certain percent. Hedge days, if we wanted to hedge it with stocks, uh, how often you would do that, uh, we default to one day there. Hedge tolerance, when it gets to 20 delta, then, then uh, flatten out. Uh, market width ratio, that's how uh, wide the market is, so you don't want to trade when the market's too wide. So these are all settings uh, that you could put in there. This is kind of a weird one, but kind of kind of nice. The, the, this is basically put call parity is holding. 
uh, you could trade at only certain uh, volatilities, implied volatilities, uh, the actual absolute values of the bid or ask that you might want to uh, trade. Um, there are some entry date triggers like earnings um, as an entry date trigger. The one that we want to talk about is, is uh, the one I get asked the most about are these entry indicators. Before I dive into that, any, anything uh, from you on this, Tad? I mean, those are a, a lot of uh, entry criteria you just went over. Uh, I just want to remind our viewers that the definitions for all of these parameters are all on ORATS University as well. So it, it kind of explains um, what they mean and and how the legacy backtester works and what all those um Things are. It's under the custom backtesting uh, 304. Right. <clears throat> Excellent. And so, under that uh, yeah. entry criteria section of the legacy custom backtester. Yeah. So. Uh, <clears throat> Excellent. So, yeah, you can see all the definitions in here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a great feature, Tyler. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for setting all that up. Um, all right, so today we're going to talk about some entry indicator triggers. As I said, I get a lot of questions on this. So first, um, we click edit by default. Contango is in there. So you could et you could delete that or, or what we're going to do is just edit that. So um, what might be a good indicator that you want to see, Tyler? You know, I think a lot of people want to look at um, you know, implied volatility. I mean, just like, you know, X earnings, implied volatility. Uh, uh, you know, we have interpolated uh, IV. So we can look at the, the 30 calendar day interpolated IV. Uh, and what that does is it just sort of standardizes the, you know, interpolates between uh, the days to expiration that are available right now for IV. Right. Right. So, um, so you, you use a 33 and a 28 day and you, mm -hmm. you'd interpolate there and that's how you figure out what the implied volatility at the 30 day is. That's, that's why they call it constant maturity. Mm -hmm. Um, now we could, now we could only trade that when, you know, the, the, it's between 10 and 15 or something like that. But, um, you know, that's not always the best way to, to do it. Um, we could also, um, look for a ratio so we could we could do historical volatility hv um or i should say orats hv and then um you could you, and when you start typing you can see that there's already a lot of ratios in here but we could use these or, or use our own so here's the uh orats hv 120 days so for example so so when implied gets above this, we might want to we might want to then um, sell that or whatever. So so we only want to enter the short put spread when the implied volatility is greater than the historical volatility 120 days. And the way we would do that is we would just say, you know, that divided by that. So it might be 30 divided by 25, and you'd only trade it when uh, it's great. That ratio is greater than one. So you you press OK. And then you press OK. So now we're just going to send that default out with that being the only indicator trigger. So let's just send that out. If I wanted to trade when it was less than one, would you set the max to one and yeah, then leave exactly. the minimum blank? Okay. Yeah, you would set the the max to one. Um, and we could do that too if you want. Um, again, we'll go. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, SPY. Uh, bull strategy. We're going to do the short put spread. We're going to do leave those or edit additional parameters. Uh, entry indicators again, edit and then go to IV 30. And then define that ratio between I, I start typing HV. I guess it's ORHV. And then kind of scroll down and we'll get that uh, 120 day. And then instead of min, we'll type max. So we it will be kind of opposite time. And then Perfect. again, we could run that and then maybe we'll learn something when, when those are done. They usually take, <coughs> I, I have a lot of favorites here. So it, they usually take a few minutes to, to run, not, not too long. 
Okay. Oh, waiting on those, Matt. Um, can you go back to the dashboard really fast? Uh, we just went over a lot of indicators, and I want to show uh, show our viewers how to learn what those indicators are and sort of what they mean. Uh, we have an indicators tab um, that you can search all these indicators. Uh, yeah, right there. Um, so, yeah, right there. Yeah, right there. Um, and so you can sort of browse by category. You know, we have really popular ones. We have earnings indicators, some of the ratios you were mentioning, Matt, right there on the bottom right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's, the search is oh. yeah, right there. Um, so you can search for, yeah, the ones we just used with the ORHV. And then the cool thing is you could actually see a graph of it. So I think that's really neat. Yeah, and, so it sort of explains, uh, it has a definition, it has the related indicators there, um, it has that graph, and then you can also add it to a stock scan right there if you if you wanted to scan by, by that indicator. But down there at the bottom where that more details, um, our heads are kind of blocking it a little bit, but okay. uh, it sort of explains, gives a little snippet of what historical volatility means or sort right. of an explanation of what that indicator is. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. It's a great resource uh, to sort of run through our indicators and and just browse through them and explore which ones uh, you might use uh, in your back test. Right. Um, all right, yeah, good point. So let's go back to, uh, I think I opened that. So let's go back. So the short put spread yeah, so th this one has run. So let's look, which one was this? So you could view the inputs and remember that the minimum of one. So, yeah, so that's 166 minimum of one. And now the maximum of one, as I scroll down, it's probably this one. Yeah, that's max one. So the uh the min one was slightly uh was slightly better um, and then of course we show all the monthly returns and all of the actual trades and, you, and the cool thing is you could download all this information put it into a spreadsheet and manipulate it as you wish so, so Matt, I, I like to use a lot of technical indicators when i'm trading sure. like you know uh say moving average the, the macd uh what, what kind of technical indicators do we have in here? Yeah, so let's yeah, let's try it with some technical indicators. So add. So now instead of, uh, again, edit. Instead of, um, you know, if I click on use regular indicators that we we call our regular indicators, I click on that and then it says contango and has all, that, all our regular indicators. But if I click on technical indicators, um, you know, then if I do the drop down, there's a shaken oscillator, Bollinger Bands, ex exponential moving averages, MACDs, uh, simple moving averages, etc. So we have the, you know, what we consider to be the popular efficacious one. So yeah, MACD, there are ways that you can, you know, look at a fast period, slow period, signal period, and then do the min max of, of that. Um, and it'll uh, show you It'll only trade when that, when these periods uh, are in this, uh, <laughs> right. are in, in that min max. So, for example, yeah. if we use I don't know, a Bollinger band, uh, you know, there are numbers for that. If there, if we only use exponential moving average, then there's numbers for that. Um, average true range, you know, the period and, and where it is. So you could make all these settings relative strength. Uh, 14 day period again we and we saw that we saw the relative strength in our own dashboard back tester you know so the relative strength is below 33 for uh a low or sorry uh below 40 so you could set that same one to, to different numbers so if it was below 40 you'd set the max at 40 and you delete that but you could you could see how you could customize all those and another thing that you could do is you could you could just put um, uh, in one. Let's just see. So one, you might have. Oh, 
stock price and the other you could do moving average of, of the stock price and you could even use a different price but I don't think you'd want to do this. So that's an eight day exponential divided by the stock price. So you could see that you could do a lot of different uh, analysis here. Is the stock going up? Is the stock going down? You know, MACDs and, and all that. Yeah. So if I wanted to sort of replicate uh, what we were doing in the pre-can back test and say, I want to enter, you know, if I'm trading SPY, but I only want to enter when the VIX is low, how would I do that? Uh, so you go to our regular indicators. You, um, you go to stock price for the VIX. Mm -hmm. And you go to VIX as a symbol. And you only want to trade it when it's greater than 15 and less than 30, let's just say. Mm -hmm. So this, this would only trade that trade when, the, when that holds up. Got it. And you can do these for entry and exit also, right? Right. Okay, so... Um, I just set that one flying, but um, let's do a new one. So, and again, we could also be doing this for the days to expiration, but, you know, again, we've done millions of these with various different uh, days to expiration through, <coughs> excuse me, through here. Um so yeah to answer your question um you could also use exit indicators time that you get out of a trade so you know we might get in um with the with a stock price of vix at uh what was it 15 to 30 and but that will stay in um and we'll get out so it's it's between there so then we need to set something um, so you could get in at 15.1 and it could go down right away and you'd still be in it. But if you set an exit, uh, criteria, so we're going to edit stock price, VIX, you know, and you could set the same things 15 to 30, then it'll, then it'll get out when, when that happens. So we, and then if I run that, I could compare it to um, the other scan that we did, see if it's better to get out um, quicker or not be between these two. Cool. Yeah. yeah, so these features, these entry and exit indicators um, are not available in the custom backtester and the dashboard. That's sort of the big difference between yeah. these two versions of the backtester. Yeah, definitely. You know, some some people want to, ha you know, or have very specific times they want to get in or out of a certain uh, strategy, mm -hmm. and that's where the that's where the customized backtester back could really come in handy. You know, I think it's I think it's good to go and find, you know, generally what works, and then try to fine tune it in in the uh, customized uh, yeah. backtest because, you know. You could you could see how long it would take to run you know ten versus uh, uh, five million, <laughs> so um, you know, that's why. Yeah, custom like very specific dates that you want to enter. Right. Uh, you know, we get a lot of questions about. Yeah. Um, it, you know what you know what I'm about to say. There's there's yeah. a way in the legacy back tester to enter based on like exact dates. So we're not using any entry or exit indicators here. It's just a list that you upload uh, right. of, of exact dates. Right. So, so this is something you you would do if you've already had some sort of you know indicators that you know maybe from an external source or some data that you want to validate, and then you you try it out in the back test. Right? Yeah, real good point. So if you go to advanced options, um, you could see entry and exit signals. So you could paste in uh, entry and exit signals. And this is a, a document uh, that we have that shows the format. But if we we can um, you know make our own our own formats or whatever in here and paste that in. So if I were to paste that in right now, um, back to the wheel. So I would just click 
where the symbol is and press control V and now it sees, you know, spy that, that, that spy here. If I were to, to do spy in NDX and I go back to the, the wheel here, now it has spy in NDX. So it just takes those signals and you could either exit the signal or just have it continue until expiration. Uh, this would exit at the, at that ex, at, at this is the exit. The entry is on the left, exits on the right, and all the, all the different um, symbols and entry and exit dates are there. Uh, so that's a you know really neat feature to um, see now that now you, now you have trading at, at each one of these. And if I were to run that, so I could run a short put spread on all those date, different dates. So these you can imagine these could be your uh, your own signals that you developed, and you could say entry and ent exit for for various or the same uh, symbol. Yeah, very neat uh, feature available uh, in that legacy backtester. Yeah, again, go to create backtest, go to show advanced options, go to entry and exit sim signals, and that's that's how you can get the format. But you and then you can either drop a file there or paste it in. So we've made it pretty easy for you to do that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's uh, let's not make the mistake that we made before and not have a trade. Let's get a let's get a trade going. Um, so so the best short put spread. So this is a short put spread that we got out of, I think. Yeah, min max doesn't really show. Oh yeah, exit trigger. <clears throat> so we don't want to do the exits because that didn't work out too well. So let's go back to our list and see which one worked, which strategy worked the best here. So it looks like the 166 short put spread works the best. Um, and that I think is just a, oh, that's one. Okay, so let's check. See how do we check to see that? Scanning that. So I don't think. Well, it depends. So it depends what that ratio is. I'm not sure if that's going to work. I would use the scan feature on this since we put our own scan in there. So yeah, why don't we kill that? So this is the best one. So we found now that the IV divided by. Here we could edit it. Yeah, so the IV 30-day divided by the uh, ORATS 120-day uh, is high, then you would enter that trade. All right. Let's see then. Um, so in, in order to do that, like, you know, you could calculate, you could go look at, at, at the 120-day by by going and looking at the um, values in the ORATS um, and trade that. So let's um, let's say that that trade is in play now. So I think we're going to. And we can here. look at the stock scanner and see if SPY shows up when we put those fields oh, right. uh, okay, there. That's, that's a good way to do it. Actually, yeah, yeah, uh, you're right. So SPY, you could just paste it in there, right? SPY. Yeah, and it's only going to show results for SPY and we can see what the value is. Right. So, uh, so there's SPY right now. So let's see the historical volatility. You'd probably want to do oh, the here. indicator option there. Yeah. And do a ratio. All right. I could do a ratio. It, it functions very similarly to right. uh, the back tester. Right. I just want to see, I want to see this. Oh, it's HP. 120 day. So there it is. So we'll just do a display. So that's 11. So we know the IV 30 right here, display. So we know that that's over it. So it is time to do that trade. So then we could go to the option scanner. And the same defaults, yeah, are, that are in our um, back tester are, are in here. 
Oops, no, that's a long. We oh, said short put spread. And we'll kill this one. Short put spread, same days. Yep. All right. So, and I like to do a, where the forecast is high. Um, we're not going to get too many smooth errors. Not errors, but wide markets. So this one likes uh, the May 17, 486, 475. So this will be our trade for today, Tyler. We back tested it. Um, it's in paper trading. We encourage you guys to always paper trade uh, for a while. Um, so we'll give them, a, let's see, it's the theoretical value is 137. So we'll give them a couple of pennies. Uh, yeah. And then we'll force that. So that'll, we'll get a fill on that. So this is the one that we'll watch, Tyler. Awesome. All right. That's all I got. All right. There you go. Thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, it's uh, really, really neat to see the legacy back tester. It's a very powerful tool. Um, yeah, thanks for going over that. Uh, if, unless you have anything else, Matt, um, we'll see you guys again in, I think, two or three weeks, Matt. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm on. going on a vacation. So, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Uh, thanks, Trader Hub, for hosting us, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Thanks. All opinions expressed by Tradier Hub contributors are solely the contributor's opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Tradier nor its affiliates and or subsidiaries. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Hub contributors as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or to follow a particular strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. The contributor's opinions are based on their own personal research, but neither Tradier nor its affiliates and or subsidiaries warrants its completeness or accuracy, and it should not be relied upon as such. Any trades or positions discussed or referred to by contributors may or may not be accurate Actual live trades or positions. Such information is not intended to be a financial or investment advice. Trade Your Inc. is the parent company of Trade Your Brokerage Inc. Trade Your Brokerage Inc. and Trade Your Inc. are separate entities with their own products and services. Securities products and services are offered through Trade Your Brokerage Inc. Trade Your Brokerage Inc. is an independent subsidiary of Trade Your Inc. All rights reserved. Member FINRA SIPC.